All right, welcome back to another Roland MC707 tutorial. I'm Unit E, and in this video, we're going to go over all the new features of the 1.6 firmware update. The first feature, which everybody's excited about, is the brand new arpeggiator. This is done simply by selecting one of the two. We'll work with a tone track. You can see here, just a standard poly sound. Pressing shift and the notepad brings you into the note mode settings. Here you'll see the ARP setting right above C3. You can either turn this to cycle it on and off or press your notepad in this menu. So turning it on will let you play it. If you cursor over to the right a few times, you will see there is a new ARP page. In here you can get your motif, the variation, octaves up and down three, and if you want it to hold. Your motifs starting from the beginning are your standard up, down, and your up and down. You also have random, everybody's favorite. There is a note order which plays the ARP in the order of the notes you press. Glissando goes from the lowest note in your octave selection to the highest and back down. As you can see. Chord gives you a chord note. When you play a chord, it will do them all together. Instead of cycling between the notes you hit. Auto takes priority to the lowest note played and focuses on that one, so pressing these three. Auto two is the opposite. And phrase is a new mode, which I'm still a little unfamiliar with. Keep your eye on the comments section to find out more about this once I do. A nice way to bring in two lower notes with it is always to get your octaves to the negatives. You can see it'll drop down your negative. To bring in lower tones. Okay. So now you can have in this menu, you could keep it and still play. Super nice feature. A lot of functions so far. I think they did really well done on this one. The next feature, sticking with tone tracks, is the random tone generator. This one was a surprise for me that they put in there, but I love it. I've been having a lot of fun with this. Select a tone track and press the sound button. You'll see a new option in your tone track list. Simply scroll down to it. Select random with enter or C4, and you'll be selected with a choice of algorithms, starting with a poly mono, a pad, and a mod. Uh, sound a modulated sound then you get into your analog poly analog mono and an analog pad after that you have your cowbell or your more metallic i would say sounds your drum a more percussion or congas or hand drums kicks snares and cymbals all you have to do is cursor around to the one you want and hit enter to start picking before we pick one here's the sound so far we'll select a poly by hitting enter Simply hit enter until you're happy with what you have. Don't like polys, you want to do a mono, enter. And maybe it pads your thing. Maybe a mod. Some good sounds there. Say you just can't find a good kick and you want to start playing around with what the synthesizer can make out of it. Give it a complete. These are tuned. Do it again if you don't like that one. And know that you could take this and sample this into a drum pad on another track using your sample recorder. So you can do internal sample recording of 
synthesis drums. Dope. Anyway, moving on, random. The next feature I did want to talk about, while I don't have one hooked up, I will show you is now there is a USB generic driver. That means it is class compliant. That means you can plug your iPad into it now. This sends audio out and receives audio and MIDI. Now all you do is shift knob assign. You will find it under your system settings. Control tab. Go down to mix select. After that you'll see direct USB mix out. Leave this off and the mix out of your MC707 going out of the USB into say your iPad for streaming. Will, the volume will be controlled by the main volume here. Turning this knob will give it its own specific volume separate from the master out volume. Helpful if you're not looking to run 100%. 127 is your top. Off, it will have the same volume as your mix out. The next one down is your USB driver. Keep it at vendor if you are plugging into a PC or a desktop or laptop. Switch it to, it'll ask for a reboot, switch it to generic if you want to plug it into a smartphone or tablet. The next new feature I want to show you is the importing of drum packs from those sound packs from Roland Cloud. Previously, we were just able to download and install tone tracks and tone patches. Now we can install the drum patches as well that came with those sound packs. Make sure you have a drum track selected. This one here is a, this sound, I believe it's a trap kit or whatever have you. So you have that. And then press sound. You'll see sound file, just like the tone tracks. Select enter. Any of the sound packs you have previously installed on your 707 or have on your sound card available for download will be available for you. Find the one you like. Let's do Hands of London, Drum and Bass. Hit enter to get into the folder. You will see it says SDZ, showing you that there is a drum kit in this sound file. Hit enter again to open that up and you will be presented with one or if some might have multiple drum kits. Choose the one you want and hit enter to import. You'll see it imports quickly. You can see we have new, new sounds. Lots of reverb and grit in there. So there you go. That is importing or uh, loading an imported drum kit from the sound pack. The next new feature I want to show you is in scatter. Press the scatter button and then hold shift and press scatter to enter scatter edit. The new functions are going to be found in the individual pad editing, but I do want to mention before we get into that, that now MIDI notes number 60 through 76 work to enable your pads and the scatter pad itself. That is number 60 through 76 MIDI note messages. Now to get into the new features, when you have a pad highlighted, you can hit enter to get into that editing of that pad. And you'll notice right there in the first page, you will see press assign and position. We'll do position first. What this allows is each pad to go to a specific and different destination, anywhere from your external in to your mix out, all your tracks in between and the PC out or any PC in coming in, or have it off and it will simply not go anywhere. We'll assign this one to track one, the drum track. And again, we'll, before we go out, we'll look at this press assign. This is pressure assign. So based off of the, how hard you hit the pad, you can have that assigned to a couple different parameters. That can be the level, the pitch bend, or the retrig of the scatter. So let's try it with a retrig and see how that works. We'll exit out of here. We'll get the drum beat playing along with the little melody we made earlier. And then we'll activate our pad. I 
as you can see it just affected the drum track we'll try and hit it a little harder we might not have a good retrig here let's dial this one up to eight retrigs and then we'll try it with the velocity there you go as we increase pressure See, as it press harder, the retrigs speed up. Let's make sure this doesn't matter. Nope. You set the max by your retrig number here, and then based off of your pressure, you can do maximum all the way down to just one. This is where pad gain and a few other options are going to come into how you have your pad set up. So remember that. The next feature I want to show you is up here in your total effects up on the top there. If you press shift and multi, you will see you have the comp, which is your master compressor. They have added, here's a gain reduction meter for your compressors. It shows visually for your low, medium, and high. Also in your compressor, you have new release syncs so you can sync up the release of the compressor in time at different beat divisions of your tempo doing this ignores the release time above it you can do this for all three bands the next one i wanted to show you is on a tone track you can now do sub steps or i guess you could call them ratchets to do so, make sure you're on a tone track and get into the step edit menu by hitting shift in the step. And you'll have a note empty. We'll put one in there. You have your note one, then you have your note two. Head on over to note two and you'll see there is now a sub step. We can choose just like in the tier S, half, third quarter, and flams. These are all available for your tone track, as well as we've always had our sub steps on our drum tracks. Another fun feature that has been added into the 707 to increase compatibility between the 707 and the 101 is in the knob assigns. Oops, sorry, not shift knob assign, knob assign. You'll see there's now a C4 sound. This is to keep it consistent with the 101 and its functions. So now you can have this, a virtual knob here to assign while not on the face, you do have a virtual window sign and you can motion record that extra option if you like. This is great for carrying projects over to the 101 and still being able to do things or creating on the 101 with those four knobs and having that sound parameter on the 101 that you like so much. It will transfer over now to your 707. Great little added feature I was not expecting and I expect to be using it quite a bit. And the last feature I wanted to show you on a drum track is in the step edit menu, pressing shift and step, going over cursoring to the end. Now this has been here before, but if you see now, if you scroll all the way to the end, you can get a tie. Now you can tie your steps to the next step with your sounds, depending if you want it to carry on or not. Handy little extra feature that some people have been asking for and should add for more creative uh, drum sequences. That's everything on the 707 1.6 update. I hope you found it all useful and stuck with me through this whole thing. If you did, go ahead and give it a thumbs up. Hit subscribe to stay tuned for more videos and ring that bell to receive notifications of any future videos. And as always, thanks for watching.